Murao Messi. I'm happy to be with you today for this edition of Rwanda Day and to share with you a few highlights on Rwanda's foreign policy and uh, recent developments in our region, on the continent, and beyond. It has been almost 30 years since the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, and during the last 30 years, Rwanda has strategically positioned itself in the world to foster peace, its economic development, and security. In recent years, Rwanda has increased its diplomatic reach and broadened its foreign policy areas. And since the last Rwanda Day in October 2019, we have opened eight new diplomatic missions in the four in four different continents, bringing the total number of our diplomatic missions abroad to 47. And for the first time in the history of our country, we will have a presence in Latin America because we are opening an embassy of Rwanda in Brazil. And by the way, the ambassador designate to Brazil might be somewhere in the room. So, he is part of this gathering. During the, during the same period, the diplomatic community in Chigari has also been growing, and Chigari is hosting more and more foreign missions. Today, we have 45 foreign diplomatic missions in, the, in Rwanda, and we have uh, received diplomats from representing Mozambique, Pakistan, Denmark, Poland, Hungary, Guinea Conakry, Ukraine, and uh, Canada has also upgraded its diplomatic mission to a high commission. A new embassies Rwanda opened uh, abroad, uh, apart from the one in Brazil I already mentioned. We have, we have an embassy in Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Guinea Conakry, Hungary. We have a diplomatic mission in the Central African Republic, and we have also an embassy in the Czech Republic. Rwanda is also increasingly becoming the home of various international organizations, such as the African Medicine Agency, the Fund for Export Development in Africa, the FIFA Regional Development Office, and the Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation headquarters for the Africa region, just to name a few. To attain our objectives for transformation, Rwanda fosters strategic partnerships in various sectors. That is how, in the health sector, we have entered in an innovative partnership with the German technology firm by Entech to start manufacturing mRNA-based products and vaccines in Rwanda. Our ambition is to address the gap in the production of life-saving vaccines in Africa by locally producing them to serve both our needs and regional markets. Another partnership which, which has been in the media in the last few months is the Migration and Economic Development Partnership Rwanda entered into with the UK. Rwanda has entered that bold economic development and migration partnership to address the root causes of the migration crisis by tackling the global inequalities, inopportunities that drive economic migrants from their homes. So Rwanda, by entering in this partnership, is playing a role in addressing global issues such as the migration crisis. The Migration and Economic Development Partnership will invest in Rwanda's economic development, providing opportunities for migrants and Rwandans alike, and this initiative will play a crucial role in combating human trafficking networks associated with illegal migration. And beyond this partnership, Rwanda continues to work with the African Union 
and the UNHCR to welcome refugees, notably through the emergency transit mechanism, which provides temporary refuge for migrants coming from Libya before their relocation. And between September 2019 and December 2023, we have received over 2,000 refugees and asylum seekers who were evacuated from Libya and over 1,200 refugees among these have subsequently been resettled to third countries. At continental level, Rwanda has worked with other nations to launch the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which was signed in Chigari in 2018, and it is the largest continental free trade area in the world and has the potential to create wealth for all Africans. But, as you know, prosperity cannot exist without peace. And this is why Rwanda has remained engaged in military peacekeeping missions throughout Africa under the United Nations banner. With almost 6,000 peacekeepers, Rwanda is the fourth largest contributor of peacekeepers in the world. And beyond peacekeeping, Rwanda provides support under bilateral arrangement to countries such as Central African Republic, and we also support the government of Mozambique to fight terrorism. Since our first deployments in those countries, the situation has greatly improved, contributing to the larger stability of our continent. Rwanda is also an active member of the East African community and of the economic community of Central African states, which count 11 member states, while the East African community today is comprised of eight countries and home to 283 million citizens. Coming to the situation in our own region, the Great Lakes region. You are aware that the security situation has remained volatile in the last couple of years, particularly since the resurgence of M23 towards the end of 2021. This resurgence was a consequence of the non-implementation of previously signed political agreements and the persistence of armed groups in Eastern DRC, DRC, including the genocidal FDLR, which constitutes a security threat to Rwanda. And recently, this conflict has attracted new regional actors, small and big, complicating further this crisis. Increasing hate speech and targeted killings against the Rwanda speaking Congolese mainly Tutsis, are of great concern. And this has led to Rwanda receiving more than 100,000 Congolese refugees. Some of them have been in Rwanda for more than two, 22 years now. And there are even more in uh, neighboring countries, such as Uganda and Kenya. Why regional mechanisms such as the Nairobi and the Rwanda processes have been established to resolve this conflict, the lack of political will has frustrated their implementation and the achievement of peace. International partners, including the U.S., have also been active, actively involved in efforts to de-escalate tensions between Rwanda and DRC and find solutions to the conflict. While Rwanda is committed to peace and believes that a political solution is better and catered to solve the political problems in our region, appropriate defense, defensive measures are in place to protect our territory and no one should be worried about the security of Rwanda.
Coming to this part of the world to conclude, Rwanda and the United States enjoy good relations. The U.S. is a valued partner in our development and is active in many sectors including health, space, trade and investment, and we hope to increase our economic ties in the future. Rwanda is a land of opportunities, open for business and ready for American investments. Let me stop here my introduction and I look forward to exchanging with you and eventually providing more details on elements I shared in these introductory remarks. I thank you for your kind attention.